And so we move on to question five. They say to us, water is drawn from a water source 12.5 meters below the ground by an electric pump. The water is lifted vertically upwards at a constant speed. This is definitely work energy and power, right? As shown in the simplified diagram below. They say the pump lifts the water upwards at a rate of 2.5 kilograms per second, all right? Ignore all frictional and capillary effects. So we are assuming that the water would move as a big ball of mess, all right? That there wouldn't necessarily be any water that is, uh, you know, um, kind of absorbed and there wouldn't be water that is lost, okay? Right, so they say define the term non-conservative force. So remember that we say that non-conservative forces are forces whose work done depends on the path taken, right? So these are forces, of course, uh, uh, that's the definition, by the way, I'm just explaining it, okay? Uh, so that means that those forces tend to change uh, depending on what path you have taken. Right, now they say draw a labeled free body diagram uh, showing all the forces acting on a fixed mass of water as it moves up uh, from the source to the ground. Now note that they, uh, the water would be moving at a constant speed, ladies and gents. So what does that mean? It means the forces that are acting on the water would actually be balanced. So I've got the water, uh, the force that is applied by the pump okay as well as the gravitational force and please kind of indicate that those two forces are somewhat uh, equal right and uh, in this case those are the two forces that we are dealing with all right and it's two marks for two forces right the next question says the pump lifts 200 kilograms of water from the source right uh, to the ground at a constant speed calculate the work done by the pump. Now note the work done by the pump in this case will be the force that's exerted by the pump, okay, multiplied by delta x, the cosine of angle theta, right? So that's force times the, dis uh, the displacement there, right? Now the force of the pump, we did say that this force here, even though it's not given, but it would be equal to gravitational force, right? So how much water are we lifting? We're lifting 200 kilograms. So what would be gravitational force in that, in that case? That would be mass times G, that's 200 times 9.8. Okay, so that's 200 times 9.8. That's 9.8. And I get 1960 newtons, right? But what does it mean? It means that the net force, or rather the force of the pump, okay, so F net is equal to zero. So that means the force of the pump must be equal to the gravitational force. And so I'm going to substitute it there. That means that's 1960. The displacement is 12.5, okay? So that is that displacement there. But now the angle between, remember we always say theta would be the angle between direction of motion and the force in question. So the direction of motion is upwards and the force in question is also upwards. So that makes an angle of zero. So what do we get there, ladies and gents? That would be multiplied by 12.5. And that gives me a uh, work done of 24,500 joules, right? That's the amount of work done by the pump over there. Now they say to you, calculate the speed at which the water is lifted. So to get the speed, ladies and gents, I'd say this is going to be the change in displacement divided by the change in time, right? So I need to find out how much time it takes for us to actually lift that uh, mass of water so anything that is related to time in this case uh, is simply we we've got 2.5 kilograms per second right so we've got that rate that is given there so the rate for us 
would be equal to the change in mass divided by the change in time, okay? And so that is 2.5 kilograms per second, but the mass that we are lifting is 200, and this is divided by time. And so to get that time, ladies and gents, uh, if we cross multiply, we're going to get 200 divided by 2.5, and that would give us uh, 200 divided by 2.5, and that gives us 8 seconds, right? So that means the change in distance, that's 12.5 meters, divided by that time, which is 8 seconds, and so the speed there would be 12.5 divided by 8, um, and we'll just say that's 1.56 meters per second. All right. Okay, so that's meters per second. And then finally, ladies and gents, they wanted us to determine the power, right, that is exerted by, uh, dissipated by the pump. So we know that every time we get power, that going, that's going to be the average force, or the force of the pump in this case, multiplied by the average velocity, right? We found that average velocity there. So that's going to be the force of the pump. We found it to be 1960, okay, multiplied by that average velocity, which is 1.56, okay? And in this case, we've got 1960 times 1.56. Um, and what we are going to get, uh, 1960 times 1.56, and that gives us power of 3057.6 watts. Alternatively, we could have said that power is the rate at which work is done. So that's work done divided by time. And so that would have given us 24,500. And we divide that by the time that it takes, which was eight seconds. And we would be able to get the same amount of power. All right, and we'll leave it there, ladies and gents, and we will see each other when we answer question six. From me for now, it's Shop Shop.